For today's Agato's Game Reviews, we are going to be reviewing Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition! So let's begin! What the fuck? Oh my god damn it! Oh my! Now, let's talk about the plot! First thing you gotta know is that this story begins with the Age of Dragons. There were these douchebag dragons who happened to be the superior race and basically dominated the entire world. Until four heroes known as Gwyn, Nido, the Witch of Isleth, and the dragon named Seath the Scaleless happened to defeat all the dragons and began their Age of Fire. Oh, we cannot forget about the bitch ass pygmy who happened to do nothing in the war, but he did end up creating humans, so that's cool, I guess. With the first flame of the world not being able to last forever, the Witch of Isolith worried and decided to try an experiment in which she would recreate the fire but make it immortal. Unfortunately for her, though, this ended up backfiring on her, causing her to turn into a bed of chaos, which happened to spawn plenty of demons. Such a great turnout, right? Gwyn decided to take responsibility for this and ended up sacrificing himself in order to keep the first flame of the world going. This way, the whole entire world would not fall into a world of darkness. Unfortunately for him, the flame was not fully rekindled. Instead, the flame was actually weakened, which caused many people who bear the cursed dark sign, known as the undead, to appear among humanity. These branded with it can no longer die, but they gradually do go insane and enter a state known as hollowing which basically means that they are just zombies. Since mindless hollows are threats to humans, undead are corralled and locked away, which is what you are. You happen to play as a hollowed who happens to be in a jail cell, isolated from the rest of humanity. You start off the game basically being one of the undead who was chosen to go ring a bell known as the Bell of Awakening. But there also happens to be two of them, so you gotta ring two bells of awakening, and then a lot of shit happens, and then guess what? You can either decide to go into the Age of Darkness in which you become the master, or you can rekindle the fire and make it even better. Your choice! I would like to add that there's so much more to the story than I have just said here. But, I just gave a brief summary of it. So, if you are interested in learning more about it, feel free to look it up on Wikipedia or some sort of website. But I'm not going to go ahead and do that for you. Let's get on ahead and talk about gameplay. First thing you gotta know is that you are going to die. A lot. Yeah, the thing about this game is that you need to do everything perfectly or else you will definitely be punished. In order for one to become a pro at Dark Souls, you must be a professional when it comes to timing, especially when it comes to dodging heavy hitting creatures like bosses for example. One mistake can cost you the whole entire game and then you gotta retry from the last checkpoint. Personally, I find this to be a great feature they added to Dark Souls because not only does this improve the player's gameplay in Dark Souls, but in so many other games which allows the player to actually enjoy the games more. Not only that, but every boss fight is so epic in every way that I just have to keep playing the game over and over again just to get that same adrenaline rush. Same adrenaline rush. On a serious note though, the boss fights are actually truly epic in very unique ways. Each boss has a different way of defeating them. For example, gargoyles are two of the same creatures that are fighting at the same time. Smo and Ornstein are a fat dude and this little dude that both charge at you with different kinds of movesets. You need to learn, you need to adapt, you need to figure out how to kick their asses. Personally, I believe the biggest issue with Dark Souls was not the fighting, but rather it was where to go. Honestly, once you finish the tutorial, you're literally left in an area where you have no clue where to go. In fact, most people on the first try end up getting bombarded by skeletons and basically getting gang raped by them. It's ridiculous. If you have no clue where to go, I encourage you to actually look online for tips because you will spend hours trying to figure out where you can go before you actually even progress through the game. Last thing I want to talk about is music. I know in my previous game review I happened to forget about music even though I gave it a rating. So let me discuss with you why I find this to be so important. Music is basically the foundation for mood when playing these kind of games. If you were to go against a boss, a boss and they just happen to not have any music playing in the background, you're not going to feel anything whatsoever. You need to have some intense beats going on just like this for example.
If you don't have that playing while you're fighting the boss, you are not going to have a fun time. You're just going to have to deal with silence, basically, with a little sound effects from time to time. Which is why I find music to be such a huge part in games. The only issue I have with Dark Souls with music, though, is that it only plays during boss fights. Nowhere else in the game does it play it, and that's why sometimes it gets a little dry. Final results for Dark Souls. Plot. 8 out of 10. Gameplay. 9 out of 10. Music. 7 out of 10. A great game for anyone to play. And this concludes Egato's Game Reviews. If you have any questions, discussions, recommendations, or anything else, be sure to leave a comment in the section below. Thank you very much. Ooh, look at the moon. The moon is all like monocle too. Oh, what a wonderful night we're having, Mr. Moon. Oh, hello, Mr. Penguin. Oh. I'm gonna win God and Mario song this way. Oh. This is actually.